This is a module on disc brakes found in Aldata's training garage. Note the audio, interactivity, and checks for knowledge that are part of the module. These tools keep the learner involved in the course and enhance the learning event. The major components of disc brakes are the rotor, caliper, and brake pads. Click on the buttons to hear more about the component. The rotor is mounted on the wheel hub. It provides braking surface for the pads to push against. Friction between the rotor and pads stops the vehicle when the brakes are applied. Calipers are located over the rotor. They convert the hydraulic pressure received through the brake lines and hoses from the master cylinder into mechanical action that pushes the brake pads against the rotor. The brake pads are located between the calipers and the rotor. When pushed against the rotor, the pads create friction, which stops the vehicle. When the brakes are applied, the pressure from the brake pedal is transmitted through the brake booster to the master cylinder. From there, the hydraulic pressure travels through the brake lines and hoses. Finally, the pressure reaches the calipers, which react by pushing the brake pads against the rotors. The friction between the brake pads and rotors slows and eventually stops the vehicle. When the brakes are released, the hydraulic pressure eases and the calipers release. The caliper piston seals retract the pistons, disengaging the brake pads from the rotors. This reduces brake drag and improves fuel economy. There are two types of disc brakes, fixed caliper and floating or sliding calipers. Fixed calipers are bolted to their supports and do not move when the calipers are applied. There are pistons located on both the inboard and outboard side of the caliper. The pads are held in place by locating pins. Piston arrangements vary. There may be four pistons with two on each side. Lighter vehicles use two pistons, one on each side. Some vehicles use three pistons. When fixed caliper brakes are applied, the hydraulic pressure moves the pistons toward the rotor. This pushes the brake pads into contact with the rotor. The friction between the pads and rotor stops the vehicle. In order for the pistons to apply at the same time and with identical force, the caliper must be mounted precisely over the center of the rotor. This ensures that the pistons are all traveling the same distance to the rotor. Floating calipers and slide calipers are very similar. Both generally use one piston located on the inboard side of the caliper. The brake pads are attached to the piston on the inboard side and the caliper housing on the outboard side. When the brakes are applied, the hydraulic pressure forces the piston to move out against the pad. The pad presses against the inboard rotor surface. Pressure applied to the piston forces the caliper to move on its slides toward the inboard side. This increases the pressure on the outboard side. The caliper movement applies pressure against the outboard brake pad, forcing the pad against the rotor surface. Both brake pads press against the rotor surface, stopping the vehicle. To review, drag the step to the appropriate number for the fixed caliper operation.
typically brakes are brought in for service when they begin to make noise. The noise may be caused by wear indicators or by sound dampening devices not functioning as intended. Click on the buttons to hear more about each type. Audible wear indicators use a metal spring on the edge of the pads that cause a scraping sound that goes away when the brakes are applied. Electronic wear indicators use pellets placed inside the brake pad. As the pad wears away, the pellets are exposed and complete the circuit. This triggers a warning light on the instrument panel or driver information center. Even after the pads have been replaced, it may take a quarter mile of driving before the warning light turns off. Always check the specific service procedures for vehicles with electronic sensors as they may be damaged by improper handling. Rattling may indicate a concern with the anti-rattle and retaining hardware. On most vehicles, a wave plate or spring applies tension to the brake pad to prevent movement. Some vehicles use an elastic compression compound in place of the spring. The compound is placed between the caliper and brake pad to dampen vibration and rotor noise. The noise caused by these components may be annoying, but generally does not affect the operation of the brakes. When servicing disc brakes, the most common procedure is pad replacement. Caliper replacement is indicated if parts are worn or there's evidence of leaks or corrosion. Rotor resurfacing is required if there are grooves, scoring, pulsating concerns, out-of-limits runout, or parallelism. Depending on the rotor thickness and specifications, it may be replaced rather than resurfaced. There are some important guidelines to follow when replacing brake pads. Even if only one pad is worn, the entire set of pads, inner and outer, must be replaced at each wheel. If pads show unequal wear, you must also diagnose and correct the underlying cause. There are some important safety cautions you should be aware of when working on brakes. Avoid breathing brake dust, which can be very hazardous if inhaled. Handle brake fluid with care by wearing gloves and safety glasses, as it may irritate skin and eyes. If fluid comes in contact with your skin, wash with soap and water. Rinse eyes thoroughly with water. In addition to health hazards, brake fluid will also damage paint and corrode wiring. Always use the dot fluid specified by the manufacturer. Handle all brake rotors and calipers carefully to avoid damage. Before servicing the brakes, you must prepare the vehicle. Click the tabs to view the steps. Check the brake fluid level. If the fluid is above the add mark and you know the pads will be replaced, drain the fluid to the add mark by opening the caliper bleeding screws. Raise the vehicle on a hoist or stand. Be sure to follow the appropriate safety precautions for whatever equipment you use. Remove the lug nuts and the wheel and tire assembly. Vacuum or wet clean the assembly to remove any debris. To avoid breathing brake dust, do not use an air hose or dry brush for cleaning. Now that the vehicle is prepared, you can inspect the brake assembly. Click on each button to hear more about the process. Check the caliper for damage. It should move smoothly. Check the lines and hoses for leaks, cracks, splits, and swelling. Check the rotors for excessive surface scoring, thickness variation, or lateral runout. To continue learning about brake inspection, click on the numbered tabs. Remove the caliper by loosening and removing the caliper mounting pins or bolts. Lift and rotate the caliper assembly up and off the rotor. Remove the old pads. Suspend the caliper from the underbody with wire to avoid damaging the caliper flex hose. Check the condition of the caliper mounting pin insulators and sleeves. Check the piston boot or boots for damage, splits, cracks, or tears. 
To review, drag the step to the appropriate number for the brake disassembly. Once the service procedures are complete, reassemble the brakes. Click on the tabs to hear more. If the rotor was machined, clean it with soapy water. Lube the mounting pins and sleeves, or if damaged, replaced with new mounting pins and sleeves. Determine the correct orientation of the brake pads. Set the caliper with new pads onto the rotor. Install the mounting pins and torque them to specification. Install the tire and wheel. When complete, lower the vehicle from the hoist and torque to specification. For rear brake applications, perform any necessary adjustments. Once the parts are back in place, there are still a few tasks left. Click the tabs to learn more about them. Slowly depress the brake pedal until the pedal feel is firm. This indicates that the caliper pistons are adjusting to the clearance required for the new pads. Check the brake fluid reservoir level and adjust it as needed. One, one. The final step to replacing the pads is the road test. This process burnishes the brake pads, that is, polishes the pads against the rotors. This contours the pads to the rotor and allows for a better fit. Conduct the road test carefully away from traffic. Drive 30 to 35 miles per hour for about 30 seconds and then apply the brakes. Repeat the procedure five or six times. To review, drag the step to the appropriate number for the brake reassembly. Thank you for watching this sample of one of the many courses in the All Data Training Garage. The course topics in the All Data Training Garage range from foundational automotive system concepts to advanced automotive topics, as well as many topics on customer sales, service, and retention, to shop business topics such as financial management, parts inventory, and marketing. To learn more about All Data's Training Garage, Contact your all-data sales representative or call 800-697-2533. That's 800-697-2533.